Hello everybody, we're here again on my modular plot and uh, it's been a while since I've made a video. April was hard work, it was cold and frosty every day and now, now we're on the 5th of May and yeah, the last two days we've had torrential downpour. So one good thing is I do not have to water the plot. The things that I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to put in some beetroots, first batch of beetroots, started another batch at home earlier and then I'm going to make up for my slightly tired peas and I'm going to do a couple in situ. So I've got my save seed from last year, these are some Monge 2, uh, Bajka and I'm going to put in some Champion of England climbing peas as well. Just to fill in the gaps of uh, things that haven't germinated and things that have died. One sad thing is uh, my first batch of sweet magnolia have uh, bit the dust already and I kind of was a bit hesitant planting out at early April because of all the frosts and I left some of my peas for a bit longer and they got stressed in their pots. So I'm going to plan and do some fresh peas for the 1st of June and they're going to be past the last frost date so I don't have to worry about that and uh, we're just going to take it from there. The other couple of things I'm going to do, what we're going to do here, we're going to start another row of uh, Calabrese. I'm going to try and start some Romanesco in the ground and I'm going to do another couple of rows of parsnips and the last batch of spring onions. At home, I have done a kind of backup broccoli uh, tray, mixing all the different kind of strains of broccoli that I've got going. And because germination at the plot has been pretty sad with all the frosts that we've been having. So I didn't get much done last month, but I did have a kind of spurt uh, around about the 20th and got a few things in. So let's have a little tour of uh, what's going on with the plot. All right, cheers. Let's start at the front of the plot. And here's me lovely, lovely raspberries. They're coming up. And look, there's some little ones down here. They're starting to come in. These are golden raspberries and uh, they came with the plot, which is very nice. Let's go through the beds. So here we have the peas. And they're not a massive success at the moment. So let's have a look at those. And these is what happens to the sweet magnolias in the frost. So they've cacked it. This is the second batch, which is doing a bit better. And then the Monge 2 are doing all right. These ones are about 40 days old when I transplant them out, really, really stressed. And then these ones were around about 15 and a lot happier. I think 15 is going to be my uh, time to transplant. See, the 15 day ones are much happier. And I think these are cacked it. So I'm going to put in those extra peas. Here's bed two, which is going to be the bean bed. And in those frosty days, I took it on myself to chuck a load and load of manure on it. So I'm just trying to make it a little bit better by covering it for a while. And the other thing I also filled up, I filled up this one here with a load of manure too. So it's good to actually get things down to the plot readying and maturing and then here's some stuff from last year which is the sprouting broccoli which has done okay but i think i might be ripping it out very soon and it's kind of messed up my rotation because it wasn't planned last year at all and it's in the wrong place and i want to put some beetroot there in this bed we've just done some spinach here which isn't germinating yet that went in a couple of days ago and then over the end we've got a little patch of lettuces going which seems to have survived the torrential rain. Bed four is the carrot and parsnip bed. I will take this cover off and uh, check on how the progress is going. So we've got all the carrots in and sown. Uh, we'll see how many have germinated. And um, we've put in uh, two rows of parsnips and then I put another two rows in and then I'm gonna put some more in today. In bed five and six, it's my potato beds this year. And these two have been combined into a big bed and I'm running the uh, north to south uh, for the rows of potatoes. And the first, the second earlies have started to come up. 
so they're doing all right but i might be like i think i might cover them up because there's more frost coming and uh, around about the uh, 20th of last month i did actually get in the uh, the main crop so this has all been planted so uh, i'm gonna have to wait for some harvesting and keep soiling up bed seven and eight are my allium beds and very good news because i think on my last vid my uh my shallots hadn't started and they came in around about the 25th of march started sprouting up and uh, one month later they're looking very good the garlic at the end is uh is pulling through as well so we might get a few of those my spring onions <coughs> and not doing the best. A few have sprouted, but they've been in for ages. I was imagining a whole forest. They probably should have started these at home. Once again, the April frosts have uh, made germinating very hard. Soil temperature, it's important. I didn't really factor that in. And I did get in my onions. So on the left, uh, there's the my first batch of onions which was started at the beginning of Feb and on the right is the second batch which was middle of Feb uh, and it goes white red white red uh, and they're doing pretty well I can't the difference between the two isn't that massive for one having two weeks on the other and then at the end we've just got the leek seed bed so these were started at home and I've just healed them in just so they can grow up because uh, things tend to get stressed sat on my window ledge only getting a uh, half a day's worth of sun and then in the rotation the last two beds are these lovely ones which are my broccoli and brassicas beds these have had uh, a row of rocket that's been sown at the on the far right and uh, that's all come up and i'm going to check and see if any of the broccoli calabrese has actually germinated once again soil temperature is way too low and this is why i've done a backup batch of uh, of broccoli for any failures i can just fill the gaps with things that i've grown at home even though broccoli is always said to it's better to start in the ground but if it doesn't start i'll start it at home all right let's look onto the fun beds well, this isn't that fun. I've managed to like nearly destroy rhubarb. There was one there, gone. One there, it's just a little nubbin. But it keeps sprouting and dying. And then this one might pull through, hopefully. Otherwise I'll be borrowing other people's sets and try again next year. Strawberries are brilliant. Really excited for these. Uh, last year we didn't harvest anything and let them establish. And this year we're going to get a really good crop. Here we have the mystery bed. So we've chopped down the dafts. Uh, the good wife did that. Uh, we have an asparagus coming up. Some chives are going well. And uh, we should get some extra flowers. And we've got these uh, red things that are popping up too. Which should be nice. And then lastly, let's have a look at this. So this is a batch of green manure. And this one is where the squashes are going to go. So I've left this all the way to the beginning of May, May to harvest. And look how much more material we're going to get off this one. This is a good two foot high and really dense. So one of the jobs of today is to rip all that out and uh, get it composted and then tap it over and get the uh, bed ready for the coming squashes. Squashes only went in a couple of days ago, so they might be mid-June for when they're ready to plant out. We're quite happy to get things out once the last frost date's over. Here's a closer look at the raspberries, just as they're beginning their life, all sprouting away there. Only a good six inches tall, give or take. These are some happy peas. These ones were planted 15 days after sowing and they've still got quite a lot of vigour and they quite look very happy and growing away. On the other hand, these are the ones that are planted late due to the frost 
and uh, I probably shouldn't have done that. They spent about 30, 40 days in a in the gutter, and they were pretty stressed and uh, lots and lots of roots at the bottom. So hopefully they'll uh, they'll pick back up once the weather if it carries on like this. I'll be happy. Well, we did finally get some sprouting broccoli off, but I think I needed to work on the protection a bit earlier in the season to get the best out of it. As the weather's picking up, it's starting to go to seed. So I think I'm going to have this one out soon. Well, probably today. Your days are numbered, mate. Here's some of the storm-battered lettuces. It's been very soggy. We've had some germination of uh, carrots, but I do not think this is going to be a bumper crop. Hopefully my autumn ones come out better. These are my spuds poking their head through. Looking good. This is about as good as it gets with my uh, spring onions. It seems like now's the time where they actually want to come up, so I probably should have waited a little while to stick them in. But like I say, everything's an experiment and uh, we're learning a lot by failing. They say learning by failing. Here's a bit of success. See now, these are all saved shallots from last year. And I think I've done really well. Germination is pretty much 100%. Uh, one got pulled out by the birds. I'm very happy. Really can't complain. I was really worried about these mid-March. I was like, they're not doing anything. And the moment you worry, you check a bloody, search the internet and you go, don't worry. Uh, end of March and they all started to shoot up. Now this is uh, the beginning of May and it's, they're looking very good. So here's some of the onions. These went in a couple of weeks ago and they've survived and I'm really happy. And they look like they're doing well. And they've, the good thing is, like the storm uh, two days ago, the winds were high. Uh, I have had some kind of animal running around in here, either a fox or a cat. So I don't know if I need to start protecting against that. But uh, yeah, they've nearly all taken. These two little strips of leeks, there's a little Lizorab uh, technique of just uh, starting them off and then healing them in. And they've kind of, uh, they seem pretty happy too. So when all these onions come out, I'm going to pull up these leeks and space them out and dip them in, in different places. So this is 100 leeks, there's 50 in each strip. And I've got another 50 already germinated and then I put in another hundred the other day and they're on the way up. I'm probably going to have lots and lots of leeks but I'm just kind of uh, hedging my bets on when's a good time to sow them and uh, having plenty to uh, stick in. It's going to be an autumn crop filling up spaces. These are the red things that uh, the plot neighbour gave us. And these are self-set from a couple that we had last year. I don't even know what they're called, but they're meant to go in soup. So let's see how they grow. And we have an asparagus. Looking good. When's it ready to eat? Might snap that off in a couple of days. Hopefully some more will come up. There's two or three crowns in here, gifted to us by my parents when we got the plot. So excited for the strawberries already started to flower and they survived the storm as well. There's lots and lots of uh, buds going on all over the place. So hopefully we should have a nice bumper crop of strawberries. Everybody loves a bit of the British summer strawberries. Here's the rocket germinating, which I'm very happy with. Well, I did clear all that sprouting broccoli in the end. I well, did old Charles Dowding's trick, which is uh, to split the thick woody stems longwards, and that way they can actually start working in the compost. So, now I'm going to put in the beets. So here's where the sprouting broccoli was, and we're going to replace it with some multi-sown beetroot. So I'm putting the, these all like clumps of four, and I'm putting them in about four inches apart. So that's going to be my spacer. So let's just dip a, dip a few holes in. 
Soil's really nice actually after these uh, the broccoli. Let's just make it row it. Everybody has fancy dibbers, I just use an old fence post. One thing nice planting after the storm is the soil is, it's actually a fine tilth. This is like clay, so it can either go from spongy to set like concrete set like concrete. I quite like planting close to the edge of the... So what have we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Well I've got 15 here so let's just start another row. It's not really been very much uh, special bed prep for this one just kind of overwintered with uh, the brassicas in. So getting these out, give it a squeeze on each side and then pick them up by the leaves. They should just pull out like that and drop them in. I'm going to get them all in, I'll finish them off. That one's split. Sure. I'll put that in the questionable end spot. Squeeze and squeeze, pull the leaves. Nice. These are definitely ready to go out. In 30 days these were starting to go. Push them down and soil them in. Some of them need to be a little bit bigger, so let's just enlarge that one. There's the last one. We beets back in a couple of months. Should be harvesting some of this. All right, last thing to do is clear that green manure. So let's go have a look at that. All right, I've covered this before, but never this well developed. So if you wanted to actually get your maximum amount of yield off, uh, off a green manure to harvest at the end, beginning of May is great because then you can get it ready for after the frost date in June. But obviously I wanted everything early, didn't I? So what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to twist it out again. So I'll get down here, grab it by the roots and just yank it out. And here we've got lots of lovely green material that's going to go in the compost deep and hopefully make some lovely compost. So let's get cracking on this. Oh that's nice. This is obviously how I like it because it's nice and easy just to twist out. So I must have put enough manure on this because when this goes straight into the clay it's really difficult but with all of that rain even the clay is nice and supple today so it's a good jet day to get on with clearing jobs like this.
was quite nice. I'm taking kind of quite a lot of the real horse manure on the root balls. Which just mixes up lots of the diversity in the uh, in the pile. <sighs> Give it a quick shake off. Well, this is going to take me a while, so let's throw this first load on the heap and I'll come back when we're done. That's the bed all clear now. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go, this is about a quarter of what we took out. I'm going to put, put this in my compost bin and I think that's another bin full. So like at some point we should have lots of compost. Does it compost? Who knows? <sighs> ah, it should do. All right, let's chuck this in. Well, that's everything for today. So I'm going to tidy up. And uh, if you like this, like and subscribe. Cheers, bye. Oh, seems like the robins like the look of this fresh bit of ground. They're killing all my good worms, but you know, they'll get the slugs as well. <laughs>